welcome back in my studio and today I wanted to quickly show you how I ended up organizing in this Meden storage box with the six drawers that I'm absolutely in love with and then we will go over to my desk and we'll do some sketching and painting and all of that. So what I had in mind last time when we had the discussion over how I should set up the tray and what I was sort of considering in the last uh, vlog, which you can view, I thought I will separate my colored pencils into colors rather than brands. So I had some pencils stored on the desk in like pretty little cups and jars then I had original tints and by this point I had a lot a lot of pencils if you don't know I am one of the ambassadors for Derwent so of course I have an abundance of colored pencils at this point and therefore it was all kind of taking up a lot of spaces and they were just scattered around the studio everywhere and for me sometimes to get to the right pencil I was just basically going to my Caran d'Ache luminance pencils because they were the only ones just sitting in the cups on my desk and therefore it's the easiest reach to me but also I realized that what I like is keeping colored markers or pencils in a flat tray. And generally, when I'm working on a project, that's what I would do. I would set up a tray or two, separating them into colors and kind of have it visually like that. So I realized that I do like it. In fact, on my desk right now, just to give you an example, I have this little tray and you can see the colors are nice and easy to view. And um, that's why I wanted to have this uh, kind of arrangement. However, after the fact, after filming that video, I took out some of my pencils from different brands or the same brand, different ranges, and started putting them into color groups. And very, very quickly, I realized it's just not going to work for me. The OCD kicked in and having every pencil kind of slightly thicker, thinner, different colors, it just was not working. It was kind of visually almost irritating. And so I realized I need to do this so that it's pleasant for me, kind of visually, to get to the right color. So what I've done is I actually kept them in the brands, but I have shuffled through the sets and arranged them in my color order, which again would be a no-go for years. Even when I was little, I would have to have every felt tip or crayon set that I had, they all had to be in their original kind of spots, the way they, they were when they were first purchased. So that kind of gives me that pleasure of looking through that rainbow. So that's exactly what I've done. I will take you in a bit closer to show you, but I went with Holbein at the top, then continuing with Holbein, then going into Polychromos, which are by Faber-Castell. And then the third tray starts with Derwent Lightfast pencils going into the second tray and a little bit of the third tray third tray being fifth but third of the light fast pencils and i only have here some whites um, like off whites and blacks and then straight after i have derwent color soft pencils which then basically finish the final six tray but the way I have done it is color grouped. So for example, if I'm working on a project and I have in mind a specific blue, I will go through the trace and see, okay, so the blues are here, some of the turquoises are there, and then we have some kind of greeny um, turquoises over there. There's some blues here, some blues in this department there, and nothing here, and a little bit of blue here and blue there. So I would select the colors and then once I'm finished with the project, I then can go back in and place them in the order. I won't be fixated on the exact spot where I took them from, if that makes sense, because they are color grouped. So if they're slightly juggled, I will just arrange them as it feels right. That fluidity and that flexibility in color is what I wanted to encourage myself. 
uh, to do when it comes to colored pencils. Having so many of them, you want to use the colors rather than just sticking to one particular brand or one particular range because it's easier to get to, if that makes sense. So I find that in the beginning of project, I go here, take the colors out, put them on my desk, work with them. If I need some more colors, then so be it, I'll just get up and get to this um, storage box. It's only literally like maybe two and a half meters from my desk, so it's not too far to go. Um, I was considering placing it perhaps onto my desk just to make it even easier so that I can go straight into the tray without getting up from my seat. However, it's just impossible. My desk is actually quite small because I have kind of cabinets on each side of the room. It's not a big room to begin with. And so therefore I can't fit a larger desk to be able to open the cabinet doors on this side and get to like bookshelves on that side. So therefore I have to work with what I have. I'm very happy with this space. I'm very happy with how the room is working out. It's part of the house. So you know, it's it's nothing I have to travel to or go to and things are really evolving quite nicely in the studio throughout the years. I feel like I have grown into it and we will get there with the studio tour this year, I am sure. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, let me take you a bit closer and show you exactly how I have arranged things. So we have got the first tray here, which I will take out for you. And I have put my Holbein pencils into this first tray and basically have done the kind of nudes into peaches and then pinks and dark. So I have a mixture of my 50s pastel set and also some of the colors that I have been buying open stock and now they're all kind of blending through the slightly more brighter colors with the pastels and i really like that because again uh, the color grouping is quite important for me and it makes it really easy to get to the pencils so that's how i have done it here and then the second tray we have got a continuation of holbeins and then we're going into basically polychromos third tray are all of my Durban Lightfast pencils well not all but I mean the entire tray is and again here we have yellows into oranges reds you can easily see that uh, the light first range for me personally although I don't have all of the pencils I have the big set the 72 and then I have been buying some extra colors from the colors that they have extended but I don't have exactly every single pencil I think maybe I'm still short on about eight or ten pencils but yeah, I am, there aren't enough pinks. There are some pastel pinks, but not your typical pinks. And that's why I also have the Durvant Color Soft that do have more pinks in there, which you'll see in a minute. Again, going into purple. So here you see it's a slightly different arrangement where I have the pastels here in the Holbein. I had the pastels in the beginning. So that for me works better sort of tray by tray rather than following that exact color kind of structure and then fourth tray again continuing with Durvant light fast greens and then kind of more into these neutrals and browns and grays I have shuffled all of the pencils and arranged them how I like them so then I have taken the off-whites, which are these kind of uh, creamy and pinky and greeny colors, and I think a little bit of blue as well. They kind of look like white, but they're off-whites. I have put them into this tray with the blacks, and that's how I kind of kept it. And then here we start with the yellows again, and the color soft goes through, and you can see the pinks here we have a lot more variety in pinks and then going into purples and blues and then for the final six 
tray, I have the rest of the color soft. So blues here, greens here, neutrals, browns, and then the grays um, in here with the black as well. So that's my arrangement. So far it's been working really well. And then finally, let me take you to my desk before I start painting. This is the final arrangement of my colored pencils. And like I said to you, these are the Caran Dash luminance and I have them separated into two kind of color groups. And it's just very easy for me to keep things on the desk and I also have some little jars here and some palettes and it's a swivel tray which I ordered on Temu and yeah it's just been working really well. So I hope you got an idea now how my pencils are organized. It's working for me, it may not work for everyone but hopefully you saw something that you might want to adapt to your own kind of art creative space. The other day I ended up watching a documentary about Modigliani and I only then realized that I had a postcard hanging on my mood board. And when I first bought it, I wasn't familiar with his art. And in fact, I don't know why, but I just generally wasn't familiar with him as an artist. The, the whole documentary really inspired me to look into more of his art. I really like how he paints portraiture, how he creates this sort of focus on the face without giving it too much detail. Often there is unevenness and um, kind of like an unfinished look to the pictures and I like the fact that there is just a little bit of uh, body most of the time, not all of the time, but the focus is on the kind of the face and the neck. I like that the neck is oftentimes elongated together with the face, so that's just one card or like a postcard to show you of his art, but I also pulled out one of my art books so this DK art book, Artists, Their Lives and Works, and the foreword is by Rose King. I believe I have a review for this book. If not, I'll try to review it soon. Uh, but there is a playlist that is called Book Review, so you can have a look there. And I will link this book down below as well for your convenience. So here we have just a little spread, a double page spread of his work. Another great example, quite often he would actually paint the eyes completely black. I find it interesting, but what I find most inspiring is the shape of the face. So the elongated face shape. There are more examples of his I'm work. to think, have I done the book review for this? I definitely remember I did it before Christmas holidays and then the audio wasn't there. So I don't remember if I have uh, done the, the, the review afterwards, but basically again, same thing. I'll link it down below and have a look if it's in my playlist. If not, then it's coming soon. But here are some examples of his work. And this picture that I just showed you in the other book, that was actually a self-portrait. And here is another great example of his elongated face. And again, the very elongated neck. I also like the backgrounds, how they're most of the time quite blocky and the colors work really beautifully together. So I do enjoy that aspect of his paintings. And that's what I have been quite curious about, considering how I can turn illustrations into fine art. And so where, where kind of I would go with it. So what I've been doing is, you know that my uh, love for face illustrations and sketches has been there for years and years. And it's actually the first thing I started drawing uh, probably about 15 years ago and it just carried on <laughs> but now I'm curious how I can take an illustration like such and create it perhaps in a bigger scale maybe on on canvas or like thick watercolor paper or something big where I'm standing up and using large brushes and kind of do more of an abstract uh, version of it and so that is what I have been considering and 
today I will just do a little sketch together well in fact I have drawn out a few faces which I'll show you so these are just something I have been watching TV programs and randomly if I found a face that had a lot of character in there I would just draw it with the emphasis of elongating or exaggerating certain face features and kind of just you know playful really but at the moment it's a bit too much detail I've got some watercolors here I've got some designers gouache by Winsor & Newton which will have a bit more opaqueness to it if I wanted to add kind of like a brush stroke of certain color and then of course I have some of the markers here and I've used them in some areas here for the skin and then went over with other mediums and I've used some pencils here I want it to be more abstract so I don't know we'll see I kind of really like this girl that I showed you from my other sketchbook the paper by the way is Tamoy River this is the very thin kind and it's the white not the off-white I think I heard that they were stopping this paper from production or something like that which is a bit of a shame because drawing on it really is a lot of fun I love when there is character in them I really do enjoy adding that kind of bit of something. Sometimes it comes out as a mess <laughs> as well. But, you know, unless we try, we'll never know. Where is the girl I was going to show you? So here is a little rendition of the original girl, which is right here. So I really like her. And I think I tried it again in this sketchbook somewhere here. So we have got these two girls and I do enjoy them. I do really, really like this feature as well, which, you know, he tends to draw some garments in his portraiture. And so I do want to have an element of detail there. Maybe it's a bit tight. I haven't decided yet. I'm working on it. And so I thought I'll take you on that journey as always. And let's basically focus just on the face today. But what I do like here is the eyelashes. So I might add them at the end when I finish my artwork. And I also like this kind of keeping the face completely white and just adding a bit of color because when I added color here, it just got a bit much for me personally. Maybe if it was a different medium on a larger scale, maybe it would have been a different thing. But here I kind of like to just keep it bare and maybe just give her a nice blush or something like that. So for the blush I'm actually going to go with something quite opaque and I think I'll go with it at a later stage. Let's see, I like this pink, this pink is good of a rose so it's, it's going to be very strong and other than that maybe just some something under her eyes I'm gonna go actually with this color here this is 026 just like that and a bit of water That's it. I don't think I'm gonna do much more for that. On the lips, I'd like to go with a watercolor, and I like color, so I'm going to go for a nice bright red. Then the hair, I probably would like to combine a couple of things and let's see, this brown, 
I think I'm gonna go with a bit of marker as well as some pencils. The way I work with Tamoy River paper is generally a lot of layers and a lot of kind of drying in between. So at this point, I'm just gonna dry it a bit. Before I go into other mediums like pencils, I already selected a few colors. So I'm thinking to use these on her eyes and possibly somewhere throughout somewhere else like a little mark i quite like what modigliani does in his portraiture where he uses like a bit of blue here and a little bit of blue popping through from the under sketch and kind of works nicely so i might just repeat it or there's a bit of that reddish pinkish and then through her hair a little bit as well so pencils are ready so i have two cornflower blues and then more deeper tones but i want to go into my watercolor pencils here and just kind of see if i have anything that i want to pull through the hair i do like a bit of this burnt sienna and maybe slightly darker kind of like a dark plum I have a little spot here which is still a bit wet so I'm just gonna work with that and just add a little bit of this pencil I love Tamoya River for sketching just love it it's um if you've been for a while on this channel you probably remember how I always used to love it and just enjoy sketching. It's a different experience. If you ever tried Tamoya River paper, you'll know that drawing on it is a pleasure. Watercolor in moderation is a pleasure. Any kind of other medium in moderation just feels good. Actually, I will take this dark plum through her eyelid as well. The other thing that is a lot of fun with Tamoya River paper is the crankling of it i hate when it does does that to watercolor paper but i actually love it on tamoya river paper it feels it's a different sensation when you're drawing or painting on it and the crinklier the better and it's just fun so i added a little bit of that pencil but i kind of want to change her um let's see I want to change the eye shape here. You can see it's a bit more hooded. And so I'll go in a bit higher up here. Okay, so then I will need a finer kind of brush, which is a round one. And I'm going to go into the eyeliner which is actually a similar size to the eyeliner that I use when I do my makeup okay so we've got that and then possibly I would want to pull out a bit more of this color just where I placed it I don't want to move it too much just wake the color up a little Sometimes when you move this pencil, it kind of just goes a bit too far. But look, suddenly we have that plum come through and I really like that. I can add a little bit more of this plum just right here. Just really intensify it, make it nice and beautiful. Kind of really poppy and then I'll look through where I want to go in. And this paper is great. You're not going to create a hole when the paper is wet and you just go over it. 
This paper is really resilient to certain things. I mean, it would take a lot to make a hole in this paper. So now I'm just adding a bit of contrast to this illustration by adding this beautiful dark color into different places. Straight into the wet. So I've got it kind of in, in four places here and that, uh, let's see, I'll add a little bit here as well. So this is dry now. I'm just going to add a bit of wetness and then go back in and add a little bit more intensity and contrast. So that works well. Now I'm going to try and add a bit of color. So I'm going to start with Holbein Forget Me Not Blue and generally when I do eyes I like to keep some of the white of the paper so I'm just going to add a little bit of this blue being very gentle with Holbein's. Uh, if you press too hard they're not very forgiving they kind of seal the paper and you'll struggle to add color on top. So I'm just going to start quite lightly because I know I have a similar color here from Durbant and the ice blue I can work on with other colors. So I'm just going to add that a little bit more onto the side of the corner of the eye. Here and then start with a slightly darker, which is a Prussian blue, just over the top. Like that. And then we have got indigo. So that kind of creates that dimensional gentle ombre look. I find that three colors are always good but sometimes if you really want to push it then four even better and you can really create a nice soft blending through. I'm just gonna pull out this color a bit more and then start intensifying it in the very corner And then go back to this color, blend it through. I love the design of the Holbein's and I love the colors, but um, the way I work with pencils, they are just <laughs> not forgiving and I won't be able to add that much pressure and being able to build on the layers that I like to do. So Durban light fast, color soft and also luminance of course are my favorite and the Durban drawing pencil as well. They're fantastic. So here we go. Blue striking eyes with the red lipstick. So now I will I will go <laughs> with the Perline Maroon. By the way, I'm using the Meden palette here that has been sent to me. I love how small it is. As you know, I always work with small space in my or well, rather on my desk. So that kind of works well. I think I want a flat brush actually for this. I have a kite brush by Jackson. It's not really flat, but it's angled. So let's do that. So minimum water with gouache. I just don't like too much. If I wanted it to have watercolor effect, I would just rather use watercolor. I like to use gouache for its opacity. I decided to add a bit of pink into there as well just to bring that brightness that's it that's the color I want 
I am wetting the brush ever so slightly just to make it possible to move the brush on the paper. That's it. So I'm just going to start with this all. For abstract that works, but I'm just going to try and move it ever so slightly without making too much of a deal. And now this is how I like doing things, just using my finger just to disrupt it a little bit. So, cheeks are strong. I actually quite like it. I like that sort of color. I'd like to add a little bit of warm tone. And when I say warm tone, I want something like sienna, like warm terracotta is a good color, or even russet. That's it. Russet is a beautiful color. Onto her eyelids or just here, kind of, just to warm it up. So what I'm doing is I'm wetting the tip of the pencil and just going like that. That might be a bit much, but we'll see. So I'm just going to blend it through actually. Don't want it just sitting like that. And again, if there's just something much, I just can use my fingertip just to work through it and then I'll go into Chile terracotta so same thing here and then terracotta is in so that works and then I'm gonna just add tiny bit of water into here just to lift it and then here I don't like this just straight line so I'll lift that okay now when it comes to her to her hair I will do what I said here so we can see that cheek and somewhere repeating that color in the hair so just for possibly a little brush stroke just to create some interest in this area so that we kind of have a movement. I would also like some blue, possibly over it, just to create a little cluster there. Eyelashes will be the last thing. So I'm just gonna dry this to go over with pencil. So whole bun is good for this type of thing because they will really glow. Generally going over other mediums and I'll add it in a few places like that. So. That immediately created some interest in these areas. And now, actually I like a little beauty spot somewhere. Let's do it here. So here we go. And she's ready, I actually quite like her. I like the striking colors, I like the kind of abstract, blocky colors on her cheeks, I like the brush marks that you can still see from the bristles of the brush, and a little bit of a kind of movement in there, I like that it's nice and opaque. The eyes I usually leave grey, but I do like in this case again having that contrast and popping of the colors. So that's my girl for today i hope you enjoyed a bit of process and me talking through i know that a lot of you do enjoy when i share how i go about a certain um, illustration or drawing or painting and share with you the journey of it and how i get there so thank you so much for watching i will see you next time